Welcome to Dusseldorf in Germany, which every year hosts a Grand Slam on the IJF World Judo Tour. Now, once again, the city would be inundated with judo fans, all converging on the ISS Dome for three days of incredible action. Germany is a real judo-loving nation, and this is a stage on which all athletes enjoy competing. None more so than the domestic talent in action, who would be pitted against a host of international superstars. As always, Japan has sent a stellar team here, and we'll bring you a Meet Your Judoka feature with the man many consider to be the pound-for-pound -pound king of the sport. We'll then follow the exploits of the incredible Abe siblings and see if big brother Hifumi could get the win he so desperately needed. We start at over 100 kilograms, where Georgia's Guram Tushishvili was in action for the first time since the Tashkent Grand Prix last year. And he was in scintillating form, throwing Tajikistan's Miramadov Shakamamad with an incredible combination attack for Ippon. And he would face domestic opposition in the final. Germany's Johannes Frey showed how dangerous he can be with this stylish Tayatoshi Ippon against Hungary's Richard Schiepurz. Germany against Georgia. Let's join former world champion Neil Adams to see what happened. Been on great form all day, just getting better and better in this comeback trail. Sony Sura Kamigoshi! Oh, look at that! He comes off the other shoulder, but that was brilliant stuff there by Tushisvili. He knows exactly what he wants, and this was a little bit different. He kind of almost crosses the arms over, and he pops off the other side there, and Frey didn't stand a chance. He knew something was happening there. He goes straight onto his shoulders, and touches Vili, is back. Look how the arm crosses there, and it doesn't matter which side you come off, but it's where you land. That's the key point. And you can see there clearly that the arms cross. Touches Vili though, exploded underneath as he always does. And that win will fill him with confidence. At under 78 kilograms, 2018 world champion Hamada Shori of Japan was in form, producing this big Uchimata Ippon against Anastasia Turchin of the Ukraine on her way to the final, where she would meet another former world champion in Brazil's Myra Aguiar. Aguiar has the sleeve and now looking dangerous. Hamada will have to stop that. Now then, she doesn't want to be down here, Aguiar. And look at that. Obatori Geishi. And now wrapping up the arm. And this could be trouble for Aguiar. She wraps up the arm and there's not many times that you don't see that leg coming out here. Can Aguiar turn onto her front. She's gonna keep on at it all the time. The referee letting this go on, which is wonderful because we know that progressive Newaza is what this is all about. Now then, she's gonna go the other side. Aguiar still in trouble. Is that gonna be Osei Komi? Yes, it is. Now, Aguiar, can she turn out? Yes, it looks like she can. That's going to be Togger Tap. And that means that the hold down is broken and now Hamada has to go again. But the referee is not calling Mate. And she's still got the arm here, Hamada. And this is a really long exchange. And now the leg's coming out again. And that leg is out. That leg is out now. Any second now, the referee's going to go all side commie and... If Aguiar just relaxes for one split second, it will be all over. Because as soon as she gives this up, she's got the leg again. Still going on. Brilliant stuff by the referee. And the leg's out now. And there she goes. Aguiar says, that's enough. And now she puts pressure on the arm there, Hamada. And now she just needs to hold up for the 20 seconds. And it, well, you can see that Aguiar's not going anywhere. She reproportions her balance. That was absolutely brilliant. The referee was superb. He let it carry on. It was progressive. And that was a two minute Newaza exchange. At under 90 kilograms, Ilias Iliadis, the legendary triple world champion, was once again displaying his coaching acumen in his new role with Uzbekistan. 
His charge, Davlat Bobanov, was on fire. Just like the rest of his teammates, whose performances have been exceptional since Iliadis took over. Facing Bobanov in the final would be Kejau Nabali of the Ukraine. Could Iliadis guide Bobanov to his first Grand Slam title here in Dusseldorf? Well, both of these fighters have had an amazing day to get this far, and they've done it in style as well. Both big throwers! Oh, he made a mistake there, Nabali. He fully committed with the Uchi Mata, and Bobanov just sidestepped him. Super stuff. Look at the arms there. Directs him over, gets a Wazari. Nabali decided that he was going to go for the Uchi Mata there. But look at that, Bobanov knew exactly what he was doing. Now Nabali knows that he has to take the match to Bobanov. He needs an Ipan, oh it's not going to happen. Was there he was at Ipan? Surigoshi there and wow, he looks at Iliadis, his coach, and he says this is for you. Absolutely brilliant stuff and they really are lifting their games for their new coach, Iliadis. Look at that big Surigoshi there, and he takes him over, he knew exactly what he wanted, and he just fully commits in. There's not one time when he didn't believe that he was gonna win that by Ippon, I'm sure of it. It was absolutely superb, it was a faultless performance all the way through the day, and he looks at uh, Iliadis and says, I'm number one. Big celebrations there, Iliadis, the great Iliadis has made a real difference to this Uzbek team. The under 63 kilogram final would see world silver medalist Tashiro Miku of Japan face Olympic champion Tina Turstenyak of Slovenia. Incredibly, Tashiro's head-to-head -head record against Turstenyak is 9-0. Turstenyak certainly fighting a lot harder and a lot better against Tashiro in this match. Now then, oh dear me, she made a mistake there. She doesn't want to be here. Tashiro was straight onto that. Their transition into Newaz are always superb. Watch this leg come out now because she's going to send that knee down and she's wrapped up the top half, takes the leg out and she did that so easily. Trishinyak is being held down. The Olympic champion is being held down by Tashiro. She makes it 10 to nothing on their head-to-heads. That was absolutely superb transition from Tashiro. Trishinyak made a mistake. Tashiro attacked and Trishinyak tried a counter but uh, fell onto her back there. She had the leg, but you can't be in this position with this women's Japanese team because they take the leg out so easily and that leg came out. Brilliant stuff by Tashiro. IJF President Mr. Marius Vizza was on hand to award Tashiro with her gold medal. At under 57 kilograms, Canada's Jessica Klimkate was looking good. Despite her phenomenal throwing power, she plays second fiddle to her compatriot, the world champion, Krista de Gucci. In the final, she would be up against the ever-improving French youngster, Sarah Leone Sizik who continued to show off her throwing power with this huge Ippon against home favourite Teresa Stoll. Which of these emerging talents would shine brightest in Dusseldorf? Sizik, a big thrower. Klimkate, she's just going to be looking for that Sony Surakumigoshi from every angle. Oh, brilliant stuff from Klimkate. She goes in with the Sony and, well, Sizik tried to come off and she came off the wrong side but landed flat on her back. Klimkat, well, she looks for that Sony Surakumigoshi from every single angle. She's brilliant at it and look at that in the final here in Dusseldorf. Sezik goes flat on her back. What an Ippon that was and that will put her up to number two in the world. But the big problem, of course, is that the number one in the world is also Canadian. 
our number three Ippon from Dusseldorf came in one of the over 100 kilogram bronze medal contests. As South Korea's Kim Min Jong showed once more what an exciting prospect he is, securing the medal in style with this classy Ippon against the experienced Roy Mayer of the Netherlands. Ippon 2 came when Germany's Dominic Ressel got ready for a bronze medal showdown with Sweden's Robin Pacek at under 81 kilograms. These two are so similar, they both spoil parties, they both of them just keep working at it until something happens. Now then, something's gonna happen here! Oh, Pacek! Pacek in golden score does an Uranagi there and wow, it could have been anybody's match. And Russell almost does Ukemi off it. He kind of loses him there, Patrick, when he does the Uranagi, and over he goes, Russell, and he lands absolutely on the points of his shoulders there. No doubt it was an Ippon. Brilliant stuff from Patrick, and he wins the bronze medal. As I said, they're both similar. They both of them beat big-named fighters all the time. This time, Patrick beats Russell. And look at the smile on his face. It says it all. This is Olympic year, don't forget. And it means everything to these fighters. Looking to go one better than Russell was Anna Maria Wagner of Germany, who faced Kaliema Antomarchi of Cuba for under 78 kilogram bronze in the match which produced our top hip on. The home crowd absolutely behind Wagner. Now look, she's started already, Oh, Gary. She's still in there. They've got outside, but the referees let it carry on. And that Oh, Gary has finished it. What an hip on that was. And credit to the referee. It all started inside, and even though it went out, it was brilliantly taken. She started inside, then she does a whole 360 degree turn and then drives off the back leg there and the Cuban lands flat on her back. Look at this. She hooks the leg in, has one go, pulls in the hips, then controls the back and it was the drive off the back leg that did it. Massive celebration there from Wagner and everybody in this stadium is so happy that Germany have won the bronze medal. Yet more gold went to Japan at under 60 kilograms. Takato Nawahisa's highlight was this Ippon against South Korea's Kim Won Jin, as he won the category. Under 81 kilogram Olympic champion Kasan Kalmazayev was defeated in the final by Georgian youngster Tato Grigalashvili, who caught the Russian for a Rosari with this Uranagi. There was another goal for Iliadis to celebrate with his Uzbek team as Kuramov Mukhamad Karim emerged victorious at under 100 kilograms. Japan's Tanaki Funa suffered a shock when she was defeated by Grand Slam final debutante Shirin Bukli at under 48 kilograms. Former world champion Arai Chizuru was unstoppable at under 70 kilograms as she made it through to the final, where she defeated Gabriela Willems of Belgium by Wazari. And Asahina Sera put the icing on the cake for Japan as she took over 78 kilogram gold. But the real story was in one of the bronze medal contests, where Cameroon took their first Grand Slam medal, thanks to Hortense Vanessa Mbala Atangana, who defeated Anne Fatumata Mbairo of France by Wazari. At under 73 kilograms, the man everyone had come to see was in action. He is a three-time world champion, he is the reigning Olympic champion, and he is considered by many as the greatest pound-for-pound -pound judoka of his generation. He is Ono Shohei. Champion here four times in the past, all eyes were on him as he stepped onto the tatami in search of his fifth Dusseldorf Grand Slam title. After an emphatic victory against Poland's Wiktor Maczynski, he would face a real test. Fabio Basile, the Olympic champion at under 66 kilograms, has stated publicly that he dreams of defeating Ono at the Olympic Games. How would the flamboyant Italian fare against him here in Dusseldorf? Well, it was Basile's dream to fight Ono. Now he's got it and he's two Shidos down. He's got to try and pull it back. He's got to go for it. Goes for the Uchimata and he gets countered. Flat on his back there. And Ono just needed to direct it with his hands. 
You've got to give it to Basile though, because he did go for it. He wanted to do it in style against uh, Ono, but it wasn't to be. And you could see there that, well, maybe a spinning Uchimata wasn't the right choice. But uh, especially with Ono, because he can change direction and he has such a wide variation of technique. And he just turned Basile flat on his back for the Ippon. Basile goes, you're the champ. And, it, well, great sportsmanship from that man. After another Ippon win against Sweden's Tommy Macias in their semi-final contest, Ono was through to the final. There he would face 2018 world champion An Chang Grim of South Korea. Unable to defend his title in Tokyo last year, An would now face the man who claimed it in his absence. Who would emerge victorious? Both fighters have been very cagey. They don't want to make a mistake. Oh no. Very important for him to win this. Now then, that grip round the back there, something's gonna happen! Oh, beautifully taken. What a change of direction there. And Chang Grim goes on to his back there. And I think that once they were gripped up in that manner, something was always gonna happen. It was Ono who committed, starts to try for the hooked Uchimata, but then he just drove and Chang Grim onto his back. So he hits that front leg first of all. He didn't want any danger of the uh, Sakeshi for the counter, but brilliantly taken there by Ono, and he wins the gold medal. And that is certainly what he came for. He had to work hard, but he got the job done. After Ono's victory, we braved the media scrum to grab the Japanese sensation for a special Meet Your Judoka feature with one of the best to ever put on a judo gi. At maybe seven years of age, in Yamaguchi, since my uncle was the sensei of a dojo there, I started doing judo. Osotogari is my favorite. That's because it is the simplest technique to enter for. It's pretty rare for me to do Neiwaza in competition, so I need to train it more. I like comedy movies because judo is a serious business, so this kind of movie helps me to relax. I like Kakugo wa Ika by Ketsumeishi. One of the artists in Ketsumeishi is a friend of mine, and they used me as inspiration when they wrote the song. Rice, meat, ramen. Weightlifting. My hero is my elder brother. That's because he was always so strong. He was the person that provided the foundation for my judo style. Joshiro Mariyama, because we are both based at Tenri University. My happiest memories are the Tokyo Grand Slam, where I first became a gold medalist, and also the 2013 World Championships, where I became world champion for the first time. I'll take a shower and I will try to train other judoka to surpass me. It's myself. 
I still have a vivid image of my strong performance at the Rio Olympics in my mind, and it has not faded. I don't fight the pressure, I convert it into a positive force. Grip correctly, throw correctly. Judo is not only a sport, but also Budo, the way of the warrior. It has an educational side. Judo cultivates humanity and personality. I believe that Judo is a sport with multiple special characteristics. We finish with Judo's dynamic duo. First at under 52 kilograms, Abe Uta was out to get back on top of a World Judo Tour podium after losing her last final in Osaka. In Dusseldorf, she was faultless and once again amazed Judo audiences with the maturity of her performance. Winning her fourth Grand Slam gold medal at just 19 years of age, with the victory in the final against Amandine Bouchard of France, which avenged her defeat at the Osaka Grand Slam in November. But whilst Uta is the undisputed queen of the category, her big brother Hifumi is fighting to even contest the Olympic Games. After slipping behind his compatriot Mariyama Joshiro, the reigning world champion, Abe clawed himself back by defeating him at the Osaka Grand Slam. His opponent in the final here was a dangerous man. Georgia's Vaja Margvelashvili is a big thrower and flattened both Czech Pavel Petrikov and Orkan Safarov of Azerbaijan as he made it through to the final. Abe needed a win. His dreams of becoming Olympic champion this summer depended upon it. This win is so important for Abe, he knows that. A little bit of pressure, but he's still going for Ippon. Still there, hooked in. Oh, now then, Mark Valashvili almost counters him there. But we've got to look at the landing. Look, look at this. Tries the Ouchi Abe, fully committed. And look at the elbow out there. No landing, no score. Now Abe pushing forward. He needs this win. And he gets the Wazari. That was a brilliant change of direction. It really was. He knows he needs this win to uh, go up against Mariyama in a final selection match. The arm round the back there, and he does the Uchimata from it. He drives Mark Valishvili onto his side. So now, once Shido a piece as well, Abe, is he going to defend it? Or is he going to go for Ippon? Yes, he does. He does it in style. Nothing else but Ippon was good enough for this man. Not only did he want to win it, but he wanted to win it well. And that is a mark of a true champion. Look at the hips come across there. Massive Ogoshi. And he just buries Mark Valishvili. And one was Eri on the board. He could have held off. He could have defended and he could have played safe, but he didn't. He went for Ippon, and Ippon is the name of our game. The arm was around the back, the hip goes across, and then he makes the readjustment, and he takes him over for a superb Ippon, and that was absolutely superb. Under pressure, the arms go up into the air, and he says, I'm still here, and I still have a chance to go to Tokyo, for the Olympic Games. And the Abbey siblings, they came here to win and they did it, both of them, in style. So once more, the sun sets on a fabulous Grand Slam here in Dusseldorf. But there will be plenty of sun in our next destination as we travel to Morocco for the Rabat Grand Prix.